How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the Air Team channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build the Cessna 750 Citation 10 in 1.5 to 1 scale. The Citation 10 is a super mid-sized business jet that first flew in 1993. At 22 meters long, it dwarfs the rest of its Citation predecessors and features steeply swept wings for extra speed and huge Rolls-Royce AE3007 engines. When production ceased in 2018, over 300 had been delivered. As for the build itself here, we have a few different configurations available. The base Citation 10 here features a flat wingtip with no winglets. In 2009, winglets were introduced as an option for both new build aircraft and retrofits. On top of this, the Citation 10's derivative, the Citation 10 Plus, was introduced in 2012. In addition to the standardization of winglets on the 10 Plus, it also featured a slightly stretched forward fuselage. For this tutorial, I'll be first building the base Citation 10, then showing you how to add on the winglets, and finally, I'll show you how to stretch the 10's fuselage to make the Citation 10 Plus. So, as I mentioned, this is in 1.5 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1.5 blocks exactly. If you are building an airport project or something in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1.5 to 1 aircraft on the channel. Now, before we get started, as always, this build does make use of our very own custom Aero Team texture pack. A download link to the latest version of this pack can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, if you are stuck using the default pack, if you're following along on console or something, I will always do my best to show you how to go about building this in default, but please do keep in mind that I highly recommend using the Aero Team pack instead if you can, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial! Alright, so, first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. If you're building the Citation 10, this aircraft is 33 blots long, 29 blots across with no winglets, or 31 blots across with the winglets, and 9 blots tall from the tip of the tail to the base of the landing gear. If you're building the Citation 10 Plus, it's going to be 34 blots long, 31 blots wide, and again, 9 blots tall from the base of the landing gear to the tip of the vertical stabilizer. So just keep that all in mind as you're getting started. Now, as for materials, here in the Aero Team pack, we're using the wool material, coupled with the purple stairs and slabs for the smooth and shiny white coloration for the aircraft. If you're building in default, you'll probably want to use quartz or smooth quartz as an alternative, so just use that instead whenever I'm building. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again, that's the purple stairs and slabs here in the Aero Team pack. So, with that all out of the way, let's get started on the fuselage. Alright, so for layers 1 and 2 here, if you are building this landed on the ground, as I am here, you'll be wanting to start this layer two blocks off the ground, with a one block gap between. Now, if you're building this in flight, in the air, then obviously you can just start wherever you'd like, and you won't have to worry about that, but please do keep in mind that one block gap otherwise. So, with that all set, we'll be starting this layer with a single birch trapdoor right there, on the top half of this block. Now, in the Aero Team pack here, you can see this is a white wool texture, just use an iron trapdoor in default instead. But we have two of these birch trapdoors going back, followed by three wool top slabs. One, two, and three. Next, a wool upside down stair facing forwards, right here. Then we have two full blocks of wool going back, one and two. Now only on the left side, not on the right, it does get a bit asymmetrical here, we have a wool top slab to the left of that uh, rearmost wool full block right there, then a quartz top slab forwards from that there. That'll be starting off the entry door right there, which is only present on the left side. On the right, it's just going to be two wool top slabs in its place right there. Next, we're going to drop down underneath here. We're going to place a lever underneath the forward most of those two wool blocks. This would be flipped facing backwards right here for an antenna on the underbelly of the aircraft. Next, going back from this here, we're going to be placing two birch trapdoors, one and two. The forward most one right there will land under that last wool block there. Then we have five wool top slabs going back. One, two, three, four, and five. Next, skipping the rear one right there, we'll place two wool top slabs going forwards on either side. One and two, right there. One and two. And then two more birch trap doors forwards from that there. One and two. And one and two. Then, on the next layer up right here, it's just going to be six wool blocks going back from both of those uh, top slabs there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this will form the wing box here, as well as the Citation 10's characteristically large fuel tank bulge at the base of the forward fuselage. So, now that we have that, continuing on here, we're going to next place two birch trapdoors going back from the bottommost wool top slab right there. One and two. Then on either side right here, two more going back. One and two. 
then next it's going to be a uh, an acacia trapdoor right here on either side like this. In the routine pack here, this is a uh, black trapdoor texture like this. If you're in default, what you'll probably want to use instead is a black wolf full block above it right there, and then leave those exposed. But what these are representing here is the exposed landing gear wheels when retracted into the underbelly of the fuselage. So once we have that, to form up the uh, uh, wheel wells here, we're going to place a direct full block back from both of those uh, white wool blocks there, as well as one more in the center. And another aero team pack note here, this is a dark gray brick texture like this, just use stone bricks instead in default. But then next we have a direct top slab back from the center block right there, and then a wool top slab out to either side. Next it's going to be a row of three wool across the center right there. Underneath the center block here, we're going to place a dark oak button aligned perpendicular or aligned uh, parallel with the aircraft like this for the beacon light on the underbelly. Just use an acacia button instead uh, in default for a kind of orangish uh, suggestion of red. But this in the RT pack here is a solid red texture for beacon lights. Next, we have another row of three across the back right here. And then underneath the center block again, a lever flips facing backwards like this for another antenna. Then on the left side only, it's going to be a stone button right here to the left side of that block for a uh, an access panel behind the wings here. And this is not present on the right side. So just one stone button there. Next we have a single block of uh, wool right there in the center, followed by a top slab out to either side. Then we have an upside down wool stair facing backwards, and a wool top slab behind it. Then we're going to switch over to the quartz stairs, and we have a quartz upside down stair right there for yet another antenna on the underbelly. And with that, that is everything for layers 1 and 2. Alright, so for layer 3 here, we're going to be starting right on top of the forward most wool trapdoor from the previous layer with a single wool half slab right there, followed by a wool stair facing forwards behind it, and then two full blocks of wool going back. Next, we can include a small detail on the tip of the nose right here. Now for this, we need to trick stone buttons into staying on the sides of this wool half slab here. Now, there are a few ways to include tricky details like this in our builds. I'm going to be using a mod called World Edit that's available for both Forge in single player and Spigot for servers. And for this, what we're going to do is grab a stick or any old item, type slash REPL0 to switch this over to the replace tool. We're going to place a temporary block out to either side of that half slab there. Grab the stone button, place one of those on the sides right there. Grab the replace tool, left click to select, clear that out, and then right click over the temporary block to paste it over right there. Then on the other side here, again, stone button, select by left clicking on it, clear it out, and paste over by right clicking. Now, if you don't have access to world edit for whatever reason, you can also use the debug stick by using slash give at p debug stick. However, this is not something we have access to on the server here, so I can't demonstrate its usage for you. In essence, though, what you'll be doing is placing a block out to the side right here, placing a button right there, then using the debug stick to continuously left click on it until you have the facing property selected, then right click around until it's rotated to be pasted over uh, that edge of the block right there, so it's on the side of the slab. If you're confused at all, there are much better tutorials online that can explain the debug stick, but those are just a few different ways to include these tricky details that we like to include in our builds. And if you don't have access to either of those utilities, you can probably just leave these out if you really have to. It won't impact the build too much, you'll still have a Citation 10, but it does help to bring a little bit more life to the aircraft here, so I do recommend that you include them if you can. So, now that we've got that figured out, uh, what these buttons here are representing is a small set of pitot tubes on the nose of the aircraft here. So, continuing on now, next we're going to place a single wool top slab out to either side of that last wool block there. Then two blocks of wool going back, one and two, and one and two. Then we're going to grab the trip wire hook and place one of these going out to either side of that last block right there. This is for another set of pitot tubes and angle of attack vanes on either side of the forward fuselage here. Next, only on the left side of the aircraft, we're going to place a solid block of quartz right there back from that wool block, with a stone button out to the side right there. This will continue along that entry door and place in the handle right there on the side. Then next we have three blocks of wool going back. One, two, and three. Then we're going to place a torch out to the side right here. This is for the wing light here. In the aeroteam pack, if you don't have the torch, what you can do instead is place a uh, an upside down wool stair right there to kind of give the indication of a panel light for the uh, wing light here. But in the aeroteam pack here, where we have that custom model to use, that's what we use for our lighting. So, on the right side, it's just going to be four blocks to match, 
One, two, three, and four. And a torch out there for the wing light. Next, on the right side only, we have two blocks of wool going back. And then another quartz full block right there for the overwing entit that's only present on the right side. And then seven blocks of wool. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. On the left side here, it's going to be eight blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then another quartz full block right there, only on the left side, for the cargo door in the aft fuselage here. And then a single wool full block to match, like so. Next, we'll drop in towards the center right here and place three blocks going back. One, two, and three. Then a wool upside down stair facing backwards, and a wool top slab right there. To finish this off, for a small detail on the underside right here, we're going to place a single acacia button right there, underneath that exposed wool block aligned parallel with the aircraft, for a small vent right there. In default, just use a dark oak button instead, or a stone button, but the acacia button is what we're using here. And with that, that is everything for layer 3. Alright, so for layer 4 here, to start off the cockpit glass now, we're going to come to the very last wool block of those two from the previous layer, right in the center there, and we'll place a single block of black wool right there. Next, out to either side, we're going to place a light blue glazed terracotta. Now in the air team pack here, this is a utility with a half black wool texture here, and there are four different rotations for it. So we're going to find the rotation with the black wool on the top half and the white wool on the bottom half, like this, which for me is facing down the aircraft, like so. And we'll place another on the right side right there. Next, we're going to grab the acacia signs and wrap these around the outside and forward edges of uh, both of these terracottas right here like this. Now, if you are in default, you can probably just use two more full blocks of black wool to finish off the cockpit glass, but I'm using this here to represent a little bit of the characteristic taper of the Citation 10's windshield paneling. So, now that we have that figured out, we're next going to place a single block of uh, white wool back from both of those uh, terracotta blocks there. Then on the left side only, it's just going to be one more block of quartz to finish off the entry door there. And on the right side, we're going to place a wool stair facing forwards, just like this then a block of black wool in towards the center. That'll finish off our first window right here. So, for the rest of these windows, we're going to be placing a set of patterns going back here. So, on the left side, we're going to have a wool stair facing backwards right here, then a full block of wool, then a wool stair facing forwards right there, to give a half block uh, space for the windows with a full block separation between. Then it's just going to be another wool stair facing backwards, full block of wool, and a stair facing forwards right there. On the right side, we're going to have a wool stair facing backwards, full block of wool, stair facing forwards, stair facing backwards, full block of wool right there, and then a quartz stair facing forwards right there. And then lastly, we can use uh, World Edit again to place in a stone button on the side right there, select and paste over to finish off the overwing exit there. And then back from both of these here, two wool stairs facing backwards. In the center, we're just going to drag our black wool all the way back to close off all of those windows there. Then we're going to place five blocks of wool going back from both of these stairs here. One, two, three, four, and five. And one, two, three, four, and five. Like so. Half slab behind both of those there to finish off the outer layers. Then coming back to this uh, row of five here, we're going to skip two blocks in towards the center. So one and two. Covering up these last two wool full blocks here, we're going to be placing nine blocks going back. So that's one, two, just like this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, like so. Then we're going to place a wool top slab going back right there. And on the right side only, we're going to grab the acacia button again. Then skipping the first block right there, the rear block that is, on the second block forwards, we have an acacia button on the side right there. Or again, stone button in default. This is for a small vent that's only present on the right side of the aircraft here. Lastly, we're going to again use World Edit to place in a stone button. This is going to be behind the wool top slab right here. So we're going to place a temporary block right there, stone button behind it, select that, and paste over. This will be for the APU exhaust at the rear right here to finish off the tail cone. And with that, that is everything for layer 4. Alright, so to finish off the fuselage here with layer 5, we're going to start by placing a single black carpet on top of the black wool block there then one more on both of those black walls there, followed by a wool half slab in the center right there. Next we have one more wool half slab going back. Then we're going to grab the snow and place a set of five snow layers right there. 
One, two, three, four, and five. This will make the tiniest little bump on top right here for a small antenna. Then we have three wool half slabs going back. One, two, and three. Then for another set of antennas, port stair facing forwards right there. Next, two uh, wool half slabs going back. Port stair facing backwards this time. Two more wool slabs. And then a final port stair facing backwards right there. Then out to the sides here to cap off all of these windows so it isn't so gappy. We're going to place uh, 12 white carpets going back from these black carpets right here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 right there. Same thing on the right side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Don't worry about it not running all the way to the end right there. That'll all get covered up by the engine pylons later. But once we have that, that is everything for the fuselage. Alright, so next up here, we're going to be building the vertical stabilizer. For this, we're going to be coming down to the very last wool top slab from the tail cone right here. We'll place a single block of wool going up right there. Then one block going back diagonal at an angle right here. Then one more block diagonal. And one final block diagonal right here. So you have these four blocks diagonal, like so. Underneath this wool block right there, we're going to place another dark oak button aligned parallel with the aircraft like this for another beacon light. Then a uh, an upside down wool stair facing backwards right here. And then a wool top slab going back from it. Next, for the steady position light, we're going to place a temporary block going back right there and a jungle button this time. We'll select that and then paste over. In the RTM pack here, this is a white wool texture like this. In default, just use another stone button instead. Next, going forwards from this here, on top of this uh, upside down stair, we're going to place a half slab right there. And then a regular wool stair facing backwards. Next, two blocks of wool going forwards, and another dark earth button on top, aligned parallel with the aircraft here, for the second beacon light. <laughs> the Citation 10 is so huge that it has not only a beacon light on the underbelly, but two on the vertical stabilizer. Then we have a half slab going forwards right there, and then we'll place two blocks of wool going down, one and two. Out to either side of the second block down right there, we'll place a birch trapdoor on the top half of the block, or again, iron trapdoor in default, and another one on the right side there for some small aerodynamic straights on the vertical stabilizer here. Next, going up from the top block of those two right there, we'll place a wool stair facing forwards, like so, a wool block underneath this, another wool block going forwards from it, and a wool half slab right there. Next, a block of wool diagonal down from it right here, then another wool half slab going forwards right here. Next, uh, down diagonally, one more wool full block there, followed by a second going forwards. Then we're going to switch over to the snow, and we have two uh, sets of six snow layers right here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. This will finish off the small ventral straight connection into the very steeply curved vertical stabilizer here. And then for a final set of details, where we have those two wool blocks right there at the base, on the second block back, we'll place a stone button aligned parallel, just like this, for a small vent right there. And then to finish off this vertical stabilizer, we'll just fill all of this in with the wool full blocks here. Just like that. That is everything for the vertical stabilizer. Alright, so next up here, we'll be building the T-tail horizontal stabilizers. So we're going to come up to the uh, horizontal stabilizer fairing right here, where we have these two wool full blocks at the top of the tail. We'll drop down a block from this, underneath the forward-most block right there, and place a uh, jungle trapdoor on the top half of the block right there. Now, in the R-Team pack here, as you can see, this is a smooth stone trapdoor texture, which we're using for the gray anti-ice strip along the leading edge of the uh, horizontal stabilizers here. Now, in default, you can just make the whole thing out of iron trapdoors. But otherwise, what we're doing here is, well, back from this one here, we'll place one more diagonal back at an angle right here. Then a second diagonal, so you have three like this. Then another diagonal and up a half slab layer right here, so it's on the bottom half of the next layer up. And then one final one diagonal right there. Next, we'll switch over to the birch trapdoor, place one of these going back from that jungle trapdoor there. Then going forwards, we have two birch trapdoors going in there. Then forwards at an angle, one birch trapdoor right there. And then one final birch trapdoor diagonal to it, like this. Then to fill all of this in, uh, from the first trapdoor that we placed right there, connecting to the tail, 
We'll place a birch trapdoor drawing batterment on the top half of the uh, bottom layer right there. And then both of these, uh, the rest of these holes will get filled in with trapdoors on the bottom half of the top layer, like this. So it should give you a horizontal stabilizer looking just like this. So what we're going to do now is just build this on the right side of the aircraft. So starting from the same place, for most of those two blocks, drop down that one right there, we have a general trapdoor coming off the top half there. Then one and two more diagonal. Next, up a block layer, one and two more diagonal, like this, on the bottom half this time. Then a birch trapdoor going back from that there. Then one diagonally forwards right there, and a second one directly in towards the center. Then one and two diagonal, like so. Next, this uh, uh, first block in towards the center right here is going to get filled in with a birch trapdoor on the uh, top half of the bottom block right there. And these other two holes are going to get filled in with birch trapdoors on the top block, like so. And with that, that is everything for the horizontal stabilizers. Alright, so next up here, we'll be building the wings. For this, we'll come down to the wing bots right here in the outermost layer, where we have this torch top slab from the forward entry door. We have this wool top slab behind it. Then we're going to count two wool full blocks going back like this. And on the third block right there, we have a single smooth stone full block coming out of the side. For reference, this should be uh, one block down into the right of the uh, wing light as well. Next, we'll have four full blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, and four. And then two wool half slabs going back. One and two. That should give you a wing root outline looking just like this. Then to finish this off here, on the front of the uh, smooth stone full block there, we're going to place another torch just like that for the landing light embedded in the wing root there. So, once we have that, continuing on with the leading edge outline, out to the side of the first wool full block right there, diagonally from the smooth stone, we're going to place another smooth stone block right there. Then, switching over to the smooth stone slabs, we have four smooth stone top slabs going diagonally. So that's one, two, three, and four. Next, we'll go up a slab layer, and we have six slabs on the bottom half of the next block up going diagonal as well. So that's one, like so, two, three, four, five, and six, just like this. Then we're going to place one single wool slab diagonal to this, right here. And this is now the very tip of the wing, so before we continue on, we can put in a little bit more detailing here. We're going to again use World Edit here to place in some more buttons. So on the front of this slab right here, we're going to place a temporary block there, and a jungle button on the forward face right here. We'll grab this, select and paste over there for the strobe lights embedded in the wingtip. And then on the outer side right here, we're going to place another temporary block, and this time it's going to be a dark oak button. Then we'll select that and then paste over, like so. And that's for the red nav light on the left wingtip right here. Now, without either World Edit or the Aero Team Pack, what you can do instead is just use a brick slab in that place right there, in place of the uh, half slab. But otherwise, these button details are a bit more realistic. So, now that we have that, Continue our way in towards the center with the trailing edge outline. Coming in from that uh, wool half slab right there, we're going to place a quartz slab in towards the center. And then one more diagonally forwards right there. This will be for the outer section of the ailerons right here. Then directly in towards the center from that last quartz slab, we have a single wool slab. Then out at an angle, one and two quartz half slabs going in. Then going in here, we have one wool slab diagonal. Directly in towards the center, we'll drop down a slab layer. We have a quartz top slab, like this, and a quartz slab diagonal to it right here. Then a wool slab diagonal to this. Then drop down a slab layer and directly in towards the center, two quartz half slabs on the bottom half, like so. And that should connect up with the wing root outline right there diagonally. So these sections of quartz right here will give you the ailerons on the outboard side here, and then the three individual flat sections on the trailing edge right here. So, to fill all of this in here, we'll first create our layering outlines. So going all the way down to the base of the wing root right here, where we have this next layer up right here, where the slabs turn into the full blocks. We're going to grab our wool slabs, and we're going to place two wool slabs on the top half diagonal to this right here. So that's one and two. And that'll connect up with the trailing edge right there diagonally, like so. For our next layer up here, where we have this smooth stone slab in the leading edge of the wing here, we're going to place two wool half slabs back at an angle, one and two, just like that. And that'll connect up with the trailing edge right there. So those are the only two layering outlines we have to worry about. 
So what we're going to be doing now to fill this in is everywhere within the outline of the wing itself and the outline of the next layer up is going to get filled in with the wool slabs. So you see where we have this outline created here, and in that space here, we're going to fill that in with the wool slabs, like so. Then on the next layer up, this whole space here is going to get filled in with the wool slabs as well. All the way up to that point, and then this last surface here with the wool slabs as well. So that's the top surface done now, and now for the underside, we'll drop down here to where we have the smooth stone full block in the leading edge of the wing right here. Back from this, we're going to place two wool slabs, one and two, and then three wool slabs going back out at an angle, one, two, and three. That'll connect up with that quartz slab there in the trailing edge. And for our next layer up here, where we have the smooth stone slab there and the wool slab behind it, we'll just place two more wool slabs to fill that space in. So to fill in the underside, we really only have that one section to worry about, so we'll drop down underneath here and fill in this outline here with the wool slabs, just like that. And that is everything for the wing. So we'll just be building the same thing on the right-hand side of the aircraft now. Now, if you have access to World Edit, this is very easy. What we're going to do is place a temporary block above the outermost wool slab at the wing tip there, and one more out to the side, like this. We'll grab the wooden axe, which is the wand with World Edit. We'll select that uh, temporary block there by left-clicking on it, like so. Clear those out. Then we'll place a temporary block underneath the torch there at the uh, leading edge of the wing. We'll select this one by right-clicking on it to select the second position. Then we'll come up to the top here, align yourself right with the center of the aircraft, like this. Face to the side, then type slash slash copy, slash slash flip. Make sure you're facing perpendicular to the aircraft when you do that so it flips horizontally. And then slash slash paste to paste this onto the right side of the aircraft. And that'll give you a wing looking just like this. Now if you do use World Edit to copy this over, you will have to make sure to clear out that button right there. This detail is asymmetrical, it's only on the left side, so we'll knock that out there. You will also have to replace the stone button from the overwing exit. So again, temporary block out to the side there, stone button out to the side, select and paste over with the replace tool. Now if you don't have access to World Edit, you will have to rebuild this by hand on the right side of the aircraft here. Due to the sheer size our wings can be in our larger airliner tutorials, we aren't able to build our wings on the right side of the aircraft a second time. But you can find a timestamp back to the start of the wings in the video description below, and just build everything in mirror fashion on the right-hand side of the aircraft. But either way, once you have your wing complete on the right side of the aircraft here, there are just a few more asymmetries to worry about here. So, the first thing we'll be doing is swapping out this red navalite on the right side for its green counterpart. So, grab the crimson button here in the aeroteam team pack. We'll replace that with a temporary block there out to the side. Crimson button on the right side. Select and paste over. And if you're in default or without access to World Edit, you can just use a dark prismarine slab in place of that uh, wool half slab there for the green nav light instead. The last thing we're going to do now is come to the ring route right here, and on the right side we have this overwing exit here. For this, to finish this off, we'll grab a red carpet, where we have these four blocks of wool in the wing route right here. We'll place red carpet on the four most two right there, just to finish off the overwing exit markings. And once you have that, that is everything for the wings! Alright, so for our two fuselage-mounted Rolls-Royce AE3007 engines, we'll be first putting in the pylons here, where this is attaching to. So, coming to the outer layer of the tail cone right here, where these uh, wool carpets end, we'll be placing eight jungle trapdoors going back from this on the bottom half of this block. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Like so. Then underneath this here, We'll be placing four jungle trapdoors going back. You'll notice that first block is already occupied by that slab. We'll leave that in place. So then four trapdoors on the top half going back from this here. One, two, three, and four. Falling one block short there to finish off that curvature. And once we have that, we can make the engine itself here. So, what we'll first do is grab the wool block. We're going to place a wool block directly out to the side of the four most uh, trapdoor right there. Then one more out to the side and two underneath it to make a 2x2 two two box. Next, we're going to grab the smooth sandstone stairs, which in the our team pack here is a smooth stone texture, like this. Just use stone brick instead in default. But for this, on the bottom right corner here, we'll place an upside down stair facing to the right, like this, with a regular stair facing to the right on top of it. And then inside here, an upside down stair, and then a regular stair on top of it, to make a circle pattern looking just like that for the intake right here. And this is again the grey unpainted portion at the leading edge here for the engine anti-icing. So, now that we have that, back from this 2x2 two two box of wool right here, we're going to place another 2x2 two two box going back, and one more, just like this, so it's a 3 lawn section here. 
Then on the bottom block right here, we're going to place an upside down wool stair facing to the left, like this, and an upside down stair facing to the right, uh, to the right of it, like so. And then two upside down stairs facing backwards, going back from that right there to curve off the underside. And then back from this here, two quartz top slabs, like so. Two more quartz half slabs on top of that there. Then a wool stair facing to the left on the left block, and a stair facing to the right on the right block, and then two blocks of wool forwards from that there. And those quartz slabs are representing the thrust reverser buckets at the rear of the engines here. So, next, coming to the underside here to finish off this curvature, underneath the forwardmost two wool blocks here, we'll place uh, two birch trapdoors on the top half there, then two more birch trapdoors going back. Then on the left block of these last two exposed right here, we'll place a jungle button aligned parallel with the aircraft like this for a tiny aerodynamic strike on the underside right there. But with that, that's the engine done! So, we'll just be building the same thing on the right side of the aircraft here. So, back from the carpet there, eight trapdoors going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then underneath this here, four trapdoors on the top half. One, two, three, and four. Next, from the forward trapdoor right there on the top layer, one and two wool blocks going out. Then two underneath it to make a two by two box. Then make your two by two circle with the smooth sandstone stairs, like so. Then extend this wool box back so it's three long, so that's one, two, and three, and box this all off here. Next, two upside down wool stairs facing away from each other, and then two upside down stairs facing backwards, like so. Up top here, two wool full blocks, then a wool stair facing to the left, and a stair facing to the right. Then two quartz top slabs, and two quartz half slabs right there. Lastly, to finish off the curvature again, two trapdoors right there, two more going back, and then a jungle button on the outer block, aligned parallel with the aircraft like this. And with that, that is everything for the Rolls-Royce AE 3007s. So, with the engines now in place, that is everything for our in-flight base aircraft. Up next here, we'll be building the winglets. So if you're building a Citation 10 that's fitted with winglets, or if you're building a Citation 10 Plus, then you'll be building those next. Otherwise, if you're building a Citation 10 with no winglets installed at all, as it appears here, the only thing left for you is the landing gear at the end of this tutorial. So you can skip on ahead to that via the timestamps in the description below if you'd like to build the landing gear. But otherwise, if you're building it in flight with the landing gear retracted, then that is everything, and you are done with this tutorial. So just skip on ahead to the outro section for some last important information, and I will see you then. Otherwise, let's build those winglets! Alright, so to install the Citation 10's elliptical winglets here, we'll first come to the uh, wingtip right here, where we have the single wool half slab, and we'll clear that out, as well as the buttons around it. In its place, we're going to have a wool top slab instead, and one more top slab going back. Next, out to the side of this top slab here, and up a layer, we'll place a wool stair facing forwards, just like this. Then behind this here, we're going to place a dead brain coral fan. And in the aero team pack here, this is a white wool vertical slab, like this. Now if you're in default, what you can do instead is use a uh, wool upside down stair right there, but the curvature will be a little bit too thick for it, so that's why we use the vertical slabs instead. And then on top of this here, we'll just place a single wool half slab right there to finish off the tip of the winglet. So all that's left to do now for this is to relocate those nav lights that we cleared out earlier. So since the space where they were previously installed in real life is now occupied by the base of the winglet, they are instead moved in a little bit on the leading edge right here. So for us, that'll be on this smooth stone slab right here. So for this, we'll grab our temporary blocks again, and for us from that smooth stone slab, we have a jungle button right there, select and paste over, and out from this here, the dark oak button, select and paste over. And that is one winglet done! So we'll just build the same thing on the right side of the aircraft now. So where we have that wool half slab there, clear out the buttons, and that slab, we'll replace it with a wool top slab right there, one more behind it, then a wool stair facing forwards out to the side of that, then a vertical slab behind that, or again upside down stair, and then a wool half slab on top of it. And to finish off those nav lights, a uh, temporary block forwards from that, jungle button, select and paste over, and a button out to the side, and this time the crimson button for the green nav light, select and, oops, paste over, like so. And that is everything for the winglets! Alright, so next up here, we'll be building the extended fuselage for the Cessna Citation 10 Plus. Now, if you're just building the Citation 10, and not the 10 Plus, then all that's left to do for this tutorial is the landing gear, and you can skip on ahead to that via the timestamps below. But if you are building the 10 Plus here, 
All this entails is a single block stretch at the forward fuselage right here. Nothing else has to be changed, luckily. So in essence, everything in line with the entry door right here and forwards from it is just going to get moved a block forwards. So I'm going to start at the nose right here and work my way in layer by layer. So for this first section right here, we have that wool slab there, then a temporary block out to either side with the buttons. Select and paste over. Select and paste over. Right there. And then the trapdoor on the underside of that there. And then we can clear out that block. So for the next section there, we have that wall stair facing forwards, trapdoor underneath, clear out that section. Now we have a top slab there and a full block, clear out that section. Next we have the top slab there, a uh, full block of wool on top, and then a uh, black wool full block on top of that right there, and a black carpet on top. Then out to either side of those wool full blocks, a wool top slab, like so. And then clear out this ring right here. Next, we have a wool slab right there in the bottom. We'll full block out to either side. Then we'll grab the uh, light blue glazed terracottas here. We'll have to clear out those signs. And for this, it'll be the glazed terracotta with the white wool on the bottom half, like this. That's facing down the aircraft for me, or again, whichever orientation it is for you. Or again, the black wool full blocks if you're in default. And if you're not in default here, then we have the uh, carpets on top and then wrap the acacia signs around the sides and the front edge there. And then lastly, we have that single wool slab there on top. Then we can clear out this next layer here. Next, we have a wool stair right there. Then two blocks up either side, like this. The wool slab in the center. And then the white carpets on either side right there. And then lastly, we have the tripwire hooks out to the sides right there for the pedo tubes and angle of attack vanes. Then clear out this next layer here. And in this space, we have a full block of wool there, the quartz top slab on the left side only, two quartz full blocks and a stone button out to the side there for the forward entry door. White carpet up top, then grab the snow layers here. We'll have to place a temporary block this time in towards the center from that top quartz block right there. And then a set of five snow layers right here. One, two, three, four, and five, like so. Then on the right side there, it's gonna be a wool top slab a wool full block, and then this time it's going to be a wool stair facing backwards instead of forwards with the carpet on top. And that wool stair facing forwards right behind it right there will replace with a wool full block. And whoops, my mistake, I forgot that window was there. So we'll have to replace that temporary block there with a black wool full block there. And you'll probably have to replace those snow layers if those broke for you, but again that's a set of five snow layers right there. So we have now reached the end of the extension right here. So all we're going to do is just replace this last, uh, well, the previous entry door right here with wool. So clear out the stone button, replace those two quartz blocks with wool full blocks, and then that quartz top slab right there with a wool top slab. And then up top here, where we have those two sets of snow layers right there, the last one, the rearmost one, is just going to get replaced with a wool half slab right there as that antenna moves the block forwards. So to finish all of this up now, we'll just grab that lever there, we'll move this antenna a block forwards, so it's underneath the four most of those two exposed wool blocks now right there. Again, flipped facing backwards. And then to make the layering a little bit more consistent, since the fuel tank fairing on the underside here was stretched out with this extension as well, you see we have this set of uh, kind of two, one, three layering that's going on right here. To make this a little bit smoother, what we're going to do is replace this rearmost wool top slab right there with a wool stair facing forwards, like so. And same thing on the right side. Rearmost of those wool top slabs there, replaced with a wool stair facing forwards. And with that, that is everything for the Citation 10 Plus. Alright, so for the very last section of this tutorial, we'll be building the extended landing gear. Now, if you are building this aircraft in flight with the landing gear retracted, then that is everything, and you are done with this tutorial. Congratulations! Just skip on ahead to the outro section for some last important information, and I will see you then. Otherwise, let's build those landing gear. Alright, so for the Citation 10's landing gear here, We'll be starting up at the nose of the aircraft first here, with the nose gear. So, underneath this wool top slab right here, where these two birch trapdoors turn into the top slab here, we'll drop down a block and place a player skull in the center right here. Now, for our small wheels here on the AeroTeam server, we use this wheel textured player skull provided by the HeadsDB plugin. If you have access to a similar looking wheel player head from an online Heads database or a Heads database on the server you're building on, then you can use that instead for that right there. Otherwise, if you're without access to either of those, or without access to commands or anything, 
you can just use a wither skeleton skull in its place right there. But once we have that there, the next thing we're going to do is place an armor stand on top of this here for the strut connection. Now for this, we're going to have to clear out the wool top slab up above there, as well as the wool full block. Stand right up here, face directly downwards, and place an armor stand right there. So the feet should be aligned right with the top of the player skull, like this. Now to replace those blocks we had to clear out, if you have access to world in it, what we can do for this is place a wool top slab right out to the side right here, with a wool full block above it. Then with the wooden axe, the world edit wand, select the top one by left clicking on it right there, and select the bottom one by right clicking. Then we'll stand out to the side right here, facing in towards the center, and type slash slash move to move this a block in towards the center and occupy the same space that it did previously. Now if you don't have access to world edit, you can still get these into position by using pistons to move them instead. If you do that, you'll just want to make sure to move them in from above, rather than from the sides, as that'll push the armor stand, but with the bottom base solidly in place there, moving it in from up above should leave the armor stand exactly where it is. So, either way, once you have those blocks back in place and the armor stand set up there, we'll let's use the chainmail leggings to equip the armor stand with those chainmail leggings, and that will fill in the detail of the upper shock strut right there. We'll leave the boot slot unequipped, so it's just those two legs sticking out, just as a representation of the more spindly section of the shot strut. So, next from this here, we'll place a temporary block forwards from the nose wheel there, and then we'll place a torch on the forward edge right there, select that, and paste over, and that'll be for the taxi light embedded in the nose wheel strut right there. Then for the diagonal drag brace connecting to the shot strut right here, what we're going to do is place a temporary block behind the nose wheel right there, then we'll grab a lever, place this just anywhere on the underside of a block, flip facing forwards like this, select that, and then paste over that uh, temporary block right there. And then connect this off with the fuselage right here by replacing this uh, rearmost wool top slab right there with a uh, an upside down wool stair facing backwards like this, so you have that diagonal connection right there. Without world edit or the debug stick, you can probably just use another top slab or a trapdoor in its place right there, but this gives a more realistic curvature for that drag brace. Then for the last bit of the nose gear here, we're going to grab the jungle signs. We'll place a jungle sign out to the side of this wool top slab there, and a jungle sign out to the side of that trapdoor forwards from it right there. And same thing on the right side, sign there, and a sign going forwards. You can use a birch sign in default instead to kind of blend a little bit better, but these are representing the nose gear doors opened out to the sides. So, with that, we'll now move on to the main landing gear. So we'll drop it down into the underbelly of the aircraft here. We'll start with the left main gear, where we have that black uh, trapdoor right there, representing the underside of the retracted landing gear. We'll be clearing that out, and then out to the side right here, underneath that wool full block, we're going to place a temporary block right there underneath it, then one more going directly out to the side, like this. We'll worm our way out from this here, and then we're going to grab the dead fire coral fan, which in the Aero Team pack here is a black wool vertical slab texture. So, for this, we'll place one on either side of the block right here. We'll select the left one, the one with the vertical slab on the right half side of the block here. We'll paste that over the left temporary block, and select the right one paste over the right temporary block, like so. And we can clear out all of that there. So this will give you the equivalent of a black wool full block straddled between block layers like this. If you don't have these vertical slabs, you can just use a single black wool full block on the inner block instead of covering both blocks, but this is a more realistic placement to the aircraft's actual dimensions. So, that's up to finish this off here. We'll grab a lever and forwards from this here, on the innermost of those uh, two blocks forwards from those vertical slabs, We'll place a lever flit facing backwards, and that'll be for the trailing link strut connection to the landing gear here. And then lastly, out to the side of that uh, lever right there, we'll place a single wool top slab for the opened gear doors. Then we'll select that top slab with the world that it replaced tool, and above that lever, where we have that wool full block that it's connecting to, we'll paste that over there. And that'll just represent the last of the exposed wheel wells right there. And we just use world edit to place that in so we can keep the lever there without it breaking. And if you don't have access to world edit, I would suggest either leaving that as a full block with the lever connected, or clearing that out with the top slab and using an iron bar for the strut instead, depending on your preference. But that is all there is to it for the landed gear here. So we'll just build the same main gear on the right side of the aircraft. So clearing out that uh, top half trapdoor right there, we then have one and two temporary blocks out to the side there. We'll step outside and grab another temporary block there with a dead fire coal fan on either side. Select the left one there, paste it over that left temporary block, select the right one, paste over the right temporary block, like so. Then, going forwards from this here, forwards from the innermost uh, 
the block of the two exposed wolf full blocks forward from that there. We have a lever, flipped facing backwards, and then a wool top slab out to the side right there for the opened gear door. Then we'll select that with world edit, and then paste over that top slab, or that full block above the uh, lever right there. And once you have that, that is everything for the landed gear. And the Citation 10 is done. So, congratulations on completing the Cessna Citation 10. Thank you so much for choosing an team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of your Minecraft world. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like, given that you, of course, provide proper credit to the Aero team for these designs. So, if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. A link to our Discord server is in the video description below. Feel free to drop on in and show us what you've done. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the Aero team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Make sure to have a look through the 1.5 to 1 scale playlist on our channel as well for more builds on the scale to see if there's anything else that catches your interest. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.